Hi, I'm grower friend Jess, and I'm the planting manager at CCN. Hi, I'm Hunter Hayes, and I'm the head grower at Cross Country Nursery. <laughs> Sometimes you just grab a florist, and there's a freaking trailer attached to it. Everyone, we are back at Cross Country Nurseries with my grower friend Jess. Hi. We are here to do a spring tour. This is part one of a two part series and a really good example of what specialization in basically two crops could look like. So they do grow other things outside of tomatoes and peppers, but that's their bread and butter, but they grow thousands of varieties in these two crops. So if you've got a rare tomato or pepper that your grandmother uses in a recipe and you wanna grow it, this is the place to go to. So we're gonna talk about all things related to seeds, starting the seeds, disease management, pest management, planting the stuff out. So lots to talk about here and come along with us. So here we are, it's mid-March, but we have been hard at work. We started seeding January 2nd and we started planting early February. And I'm going to show you right now where it all starts is our seed vault and how we handle our seed process and how we heat treat things and make sure we um, really mitigate any kind of uh, diseases right from the get-go. So our process is when we get the seeds, we weigh them, we log it into the computer, which we have a lovely system that Tom created in-house. Um, it gives us a lot number. It gives us a location. So you're seeding this this week, okay? So it's gonna be, you know, D6. So you go ahead, you get that. There's the seeds, that's where they live. And our um, storage is about five years, and then we find that it really kind of affects germination after that, so we try to recycle everything. When they seed them, they go into the computer. The seeding schedule is all based on uh, the grow time of the plant, right? So you want, like your super hots, uh, they take longer to germinate. So you're gonna go ahead in the seeding schedule, you're gonna follow that, right? Carolina Reaper, one of the most popular ones. So um, that's one of the first to get seeded as well. And they take it, they check it out in the computer system, tells them how many seeds to plant, and they plant them. And I'm gonna show you the germ chamber. Here we are, this is our new germ chamber that Tom built this year. And it has, uh, you know, this is the humidity, this is the temperature. Get ready. It's getting misted, come on in. So <laughs> after seeding, this is where this is where they'll be. Now peppers are about five to seven days in here. Tomatoes are about two to five days. And, um, and then once there's a certain percentage that get germinated in here, they get brought out. So here's some that just, it, tomatoes that just came out of the germ chamber. And we try to remove them as quickly as possible because we don't want them to get leggy. We wanna make sure they get under lights. These lights, we're keeping them closer so that they are able to photosynthesize when they get their cotyledons, get everything that they need. These, they get raised up a little bit higher because we found that if they're too low, they will just cause some bleaching and it's just the plant prefers it to be a little bit higher. So we use the T8 fluorescents and these will grow out until they get their first true leaves. And then, come on. It's a shark, tiburon. Tiburon, yes, tiburon hybrid. Okay, and then all of our information is right here on this sticker. This is for planting week 18. We need six 32 flats, we need two 25 flats, which is for retail, and it says what greenhouse it's going to. And at Cross Country Nurseries, we really try to be as sustainable as, pro as possible and as green as possible. So we, instead of throwing out our trays and reordering from vendors every season, we sanitize everything in-house and we reuse this plastic because you should, as long as you can. <laughs> Oh, I did want to say to our seed. So our seed saving program is we heat treat 
our seeds. We also heat treat seeds from vendors because we just want to make sure that we can prevent disease in the future, any type of disease. So they get heat treated and then everything is put out to dry. And then that's when it goes into a glass jar and it gets weighed and it gets logged. It goes in one vat for a certain temperature for a certain amount of time, goes in another vat, different temperature, different time, and then it gets cooled. This is the heat treat. And we found that by doing this, it really prevents any disease that could come in from another seed vendor or from us. This is set for 100 and you soak for 10 minutes. This is set for 125 and you soak for 30 minutes. It's literally like a sous vide. We sous vide our seeds, babe. This is how they germinated stuff when he bought the business. Germ chamber one. Heated and humidity with a crock pot. <laughs> So here we are, we're in our seed field, and this is where we do our seed program to save seeds if we can't source it from any of our dozen vendors that we have. And this field will be able to hold about 600 plants. We'll be planting about four to six plants for each variety that we wanna save. And those varieties are usually the more obscure ones that you just can't find anywhere else. These are the prepared beds and they have the mulch over top, well, we call this black mulch. Um, and they have the irrigation underneath and it's spaced maybe six inches on this berm because it's a smaller berm. And then we will go ahead and plant each pepper plant about 18 to 22 inches apart so that it gets proper airflow. And these plant varieties as well, they will get isolated. Some of them can be open pollinated and it's fine because it's a more stable seed, but we just, you know, obviously always trying to isolate. This is the compost that we use and it's all in house aka we know a farmer and he is a horse farmer so it's probably one of the best mediums that I've ever worked with it's very similar to Nutripeat by the time it breaks down and um, I've always sung the praises of Nutripeat so it's just pine flakes obviously a lot of horse manure it hangs out for a couple years we amend our beds with it it does its thing now I'm gonna show you the pump house which was Bill at the end of last season and this is all brand new Tom as an engineer kind of has a little bit of a leg up getting into this farming stuff because you know this is a variable cost business but having the uh, the knowledge to um, incorporate certain ideas that will make things easier it definitely has made things more effective because he doesn't have to buy all of these things. So here, this is our pump house and this is all new. And then what we do is we, as a sustainable farm, we source from the ponds. This farm is a wetland. And so this filters out anything in the pond and this injects fertilizer into our water system. It also heats the water. So we're not watering plants with freezing cold pond water. I've also read that pond water is just like a really great nice nitrogen source. I jokingly call the space the Tom Depot because <laughs> you have aisles, whatever it is that you need, you'll find it. You know, a lot of this stuff when he did buy this farm, there was kind of scattered all around a barn that we had to do like a big clean out. And so we're just kind of in the process now of organizing everything that we're finding in that barn and, you know, the garages and whatnot. So we can go ahead and we can make use of these things. Before they built the pump house and they put that whole system in, there was um, natural springs or little ponds under each greenhouse that they would pump water out of to water the plants and it was not filtered. So now that system is closed, we have a new system and it's working well. There was a question about marketing. When they started this farm, the past owners, it was, you know, the like seed catalogs or Mother Earth News. How they got orders was from mail-ins in the back of those catalogs. And so we have a great customer base, but also at the same time, that's not sustainable. So we have to kind of welcome to the new world, right? You have to be on social media, you have to do all of the things. So this is all kind of happening right now. So now we're in my greenhouse, which is greenhouse 11. This is where all the planting of the transplants happens. So when we bring up the flats, we usually set them over here. We clock the germ percent 
the date that they were moved, and then we get to planting. We have tags that we also print in-house, and they have a little microchip in them. It's a little RFD scanner. Yes, it's a little RFD, RFID chip. We purchase the tags in a spool, right? And then they go on to a printer that he kind of jockeyed around to make it print these tags. <laughs> All right, and then we use these 512 poppers to put the plug trays on and they pop out the plug. They get plugged in to the 32s. They get tagged and then they go to the correct table for the greenhouse that they get moved to. So these are all going to seven, which makes sense. This is a lot of our super hots. And then these are gonna go to three. And then we have some stuff for six. So what I'll basically do is I'll fill this greenhouse with um, all of these trays. And then as a team, we move it later on in the day when the weather's nice and we can go ahead and move greenhouses. Last time we got a comment, oh my gosh, they're backs because these were on the ground this year. We were gifted tables <laughs> and the tables are now in every single greenhouse. Maggie and Lynette are working on right now. They're plucking out the basil and planting the basil. We plant them about three uh, little transplants per hole. Oh, I love them. <laughs> so Tom put in these new fans and they have the capability to exchange the whole air in the greenhouse in about two minutes time. So they can completely cool it, make sure that we have proper airflow in there because these greenhouses, we use shade cloth, but they can get up to 140 degrees, no problem, as soon as that sun comes out. So, yeah. Here at Cross Country Nurseries, uh, we grow everything organically. And one way to uh, prevent pests in the greenhouse is that we use a uh, banker plant. So here in the greenhouse, we use barley plants as our banker plants. And the barley plants are grown here to be a food source for our barley oat aphids. Um, these aphids will only latch onto the barley and eat the barley. They won't touch any of our peppers, tomatoes, eggplants in the greenhouse. So I do a weekly fresh barley plant as you can see here, these were planted two days ago. Uh, they'll be popping up very soon. And what I do is once they are about, you know, two inches tall, I'll spread them out. I'll put them here. I have these nice watering trays. They'll grow out. And then the next step is they will be moved over into our little bug habitat area. Mm -hmm. And what this is, is there are older barley plants in here that are infested with the barley aphids. And I'm actually gonna open this up for you. So as you can see right here in the middle, I have the older infested barley plants. These are the barley oat aphids. If you can get a little shot of that. All right. And so these aphids uh, will multiply. These plants are in here for about one and a half to two weeks. Uh, it kind of depends on how fast these guys want to, you know, get going. So once the plants are heavily infested, you can see they'll start showing up on the bottoms right here. So in a few days time, this guy will be ready to move out into our actual production area where they'll be set amongst all of the plants. The next step, is we will get an order of our parasitic wasps um, ordered from IPM Labs. Those parasitic wasps will be dispersed then onto all of our barley plants covered in our aphids. The parasitic wasps will then go after all of the barley aphids and in their adventures throughout the greenhouse, they'll pick up any you know green or white aphids that are showing up on maybe our pepper plants. Um, they'll just pretty much graze around and kind of keep everything control. Having a, a larger beneficial insect population in a greenhouse growing area is ideal. It keeps everything in check and it keeps all of the plants nice and green and healthy. Here we're growing thousands of plants so you're always bound to find 
something that is, you know, a little one-off or a little special or a little bit different than the other. Uh, so whenever we see something um, mutated in a good way, um, we will then collect seeds from that type of plant. So we will take any of these uh, unique varieties that have shown up. For example, this is a habanero red savina that has this beautiful aura variegation. So this guy will then be grown out into the field and then we'll collect seeds, breed it with itself, and then that will help make the seeds true and stable so we can offer it you know, on a mass scale to uh, everyone. Six generations uh, is what it takes to uh, you know, get a stable seed. Here, look at this. So I have them in the shade right now. So this was a full flat of beef master tomatoes. Uh, you can see this is, was the original height. So yesterday, Jess and I did some grafting for the first time. We have these little grafting clips that I ordered. I got my grafting knife and pretty much you cut right below the cotyledons. Uh, there will actually be pooling of water almost immediately. And that's just, you know, the natural pool of the water trying to push up to the top of the plant. And you take the top of, you know, your desired tomato plant, you know, maybe an heirloom variety that's more susceptible to disease. And we grafted it onto the beefsteak VFN hybrid. And so what that will do is, you know, help ensure that the heirloom variety doesn't have any, you know, root diseases like black spot and everything. And everything starts from the bottom usually. Mm -hmm. So having a nice healthy root system on an heirloom variety, is gonna give you a healthier plant, higher yielding and just better off, you know, more appealing. Even your um, San Marzano's and like blossom end rot, it all starts at the root. Yeah. And so calcium is uptake through a water source. And so calcium exists in the soil, but it doesn't get into the plant unless it's properly watered. So, you know. <laughs> so perfect example of, uh, you know, like some fun grafting. So this is a micro tom tomato on a beefsteak root. So it has a huge hardy root system for an itty bitty tomato. So I'm hoping that this guy will, you know, be a little bit bigger than the rest. Maybe it'll show, maybe it won't. You, well, you know. would expect to have tomatoes this season. Yeah, I would, I would definitely expect to have tomatoes this season. <laughs> we realized that not everybody has the space to grow big. And so we offer a lot of micro varieties and window box varieties. So whatever space you do have, you can grow in. So right here I have the window box yellow. You know, it's like your little standard yellow cherry tomato, a nice short, stout, bushy plant. Uh, it's pretty high yielding. Uh, this one right here is the window box Roma for all the Roma tomato lovers out there. <laughs> uh, this guy will also say nice and short and compact. Um, perfect, you know, for a potted plant on a patio, yep. you know, small space gardening, you know, one foot gardening. This is, this is the best option uh, for something with a small amount of space. So in the greenhouse right now, we have flags sticking out all over uh, different flats on the tables. All of these flags are going to be used for um, shipping that actually starts next weekend. Mm -hmm. So when we're doing a quality check, we also want to make sure that there's no signs of disease. As you can see, all the leaves are nice and healthy, green, no yellowing, no major leaf drop from the underneath. We also check for insects. This uh, right here is the atomic grape. This guy's pretty cool. A uh, little bit like a plum shape, but has really cool different multicolored uh, like variegation um, on the actual fruit, which is pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Our most popular varieties are the sun sugar, which is a little bit more disease resistant and split resistant than the very popular sun gold and also the Cherokee purple. But I think one of the sleeper varieties in here is the watermelon beefsteak. There's so many in here. Coyote, which is like a little cream colored yep. cherry tomato. Uh, gosh, you name it. Indigo rose. Indigo rose, Indigo beautiful. rose tomato, I love them. They're uh, actually really high in antioxidants because of the deep purple color. Yes, purple um, leaves. A friend of mine actually, well, a family friend, um, who is having a battle with cancer would actually eat handfuls of them uh, through her chemo treatments. And she swore by it. She said it worked by, for her. So I remember just always indigo rose tomatoes. You can't, you can't beat them. Eat your rainbow. Eat your rainbow, yep. <laughs>
my favorite varieties are not in this greenhouse. <laughs> I will say though, this is a really cool variety. This is our Candlelight Mutant. And so it was kind of like a one-off that we just were like, wow, that's really beautiful. And it's got fern-like leaves and you can use it as an ornamental. It looks really pretty in like pots. In this greenhouse, we are housing about 23,000 plants. About 90% of our business is e-commerce. So these are gonna be getting shipped out this weekend to the warmer climates, California, Texas, Florida. We also have a retail store that is opening April 20th, and that'll be open till the end of May, Memorial Day. And we will be offering all of these beautiful plants as well. We will be shipping until May. If you are in a cooler climate, you go ahead and place those orders. If you are in a warmer climate and you wanna have a bumper crop, go ahead and place more orders. <laughs> Mitigate. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know. What, a, shit, what should I call it? I'm Hunter Hayes. I'm the head grower of Cross Country Nursery. Think so? His Tom used this skid steer and he put it right down the middle here to get to it. Well, insects. Here, I'm going to restart. My greenhouse. It's art. Yeah, sorry. <laughs>